Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Salesperson. So today I'm going to show you the release highlight for the developers in winter 23. So if you want to learn with me these all kind of features or new releases about this winter 23. So you can stay with me and please watch this video until end because we have lots of new features under winter 23 about for the developers. Okay, so let's get started without any further delay. So here you can see this is the officially side of the Salesforce and you can learn from here as well. So I will explain each and every topics or we can say that points here. So now come down. So here warm up with winter 23. It's a easy to get started. Okay, so under the trail mix we have like modules. So you can learn from here as well. So just once you click on this one now you can see learn more and it's a winter 23 highlighted for the admins and developers so we have two types of like a uh, trail mix here so one for admin and second one is developers so based on your need you can do that so this is two things available under the trail mix now we have to go in uh, generally available features in uh, salesforce so now in winter 23 release of we have like graphql api so previously in GraphQL API, right, so we cannot add like a semi join or inner join or outer join something like that. But in this release, we can do that. So under here, now here in this example, you can see just focus on that. So here, this is the query and UI API and under query, you can see like account object under the account object, we have some condition with inner query. So INQ means inner query with uh, opportunity so you can add as many as you can add the joins so now to improve your query with semi join and anti join filters get object metadata and more so you can use graphql api is now generally available to restrict the records written by the primary query with a semicolon joins use this inq filter type so this is the filter type and you can add the semi join based on your need so this is the first feature here right so let me move the next feature and next feature is basically used for the cloning purpose like uh, we have like developer sandbox or developer pro sandbox so if you want to cloning so no need worry about to enable the setting every time so in this release like clone developer and developer pro sandboxes now here you can see each and everything so it's no need worry about like salesforce admin don't have to enable this feature quick clone is the default for the all sandboxes developer sandboxes hosted on the hyperforce so basically developer and developer pro sandboxes hosted on the hyperforce this is a new technology under salesforce and the quick clone technology enhance the speed at the which they are replicated and this feature allow admins to make copies of the customization and customize sandboxes for each of their developers so teams can be focused more time on the building solutions and developer can be more productive. So that is the one another feature under this winter 23 release for the developers. So let me move the next point and next point is we have event relay for the AWS. So AWS nothing but is Amazon web services. So under the event relays for the AWS. So you can see this diagram and you can easily understand what's going on so based on this aws integrations so now here you can see we have like event bridge so use event relay aws to send the platform event and change the data capture event from the salesforce to amazon event bridge in a aws so basically we can use the send events to the third party like a SaaS integration you can also send the platform event from the AWS back to Salesforce where subscriber can process them using Salesforce platform capabilities okay so now this feature is later here you can see this feature is available later in the winter 23 uh, release this feature will be come so here it's having this kind of uh, diagram so now you can see the platform events and platform tools so we can call this uh, like event bus with the help of flows lwc apex and here you can see sales for event bus so basically under the event bus we have connectors 
there are so many connectors in Salesforce, right? And MuleSoft, one of the best feature or one of the best connector under the Salesforce. And also you can see AWS Event Bridge. So we have different kinds of instances under the AWS like S3, something like that. So you can see like SNS, Lambda and SQS, right? And we have like external services. So it's maybe Azure or it's like as a, you know, like a message services, ADP, Workday, based on, we, based on our need, so we can integrate these services, right? So this is a very important for us if you want to integrate this kind of integration, right? So this is another feature for the developers under Winter 23 release org. So now here, let me move the next feature. So under the next feature, we have like generally available PubSub API. So previously, this PubSub API is not available directly. We have to install and we have to uh, like create the PubSub model uh, with external like libraries, JavaScript library. That's why we have this one. We excited to announce the Salesforce PubSub API is generally available as soon as June 30. 2022 PubSub API is designed for the building event driven architecture and work with the existing event eventing features and products like high volume platform events. So change the data capture and real time event monitoring so you can learn this PubSub modules. So we have lots of things here. So based on your needs, so you can learn from here. This is the link, right? So this is all about like PubSub. Now we have DevOps Center. So this is the another features under Winter 23 release work for the developers. And this is a under the beta, but you can apply this DevOps Center under the Salesforce org because you have to install the man, uh, like manage package from the, uh, you know, Apex Exchange and you can use this DevOps. So we have under the DevOps, let's say different types of stages. Let's say sandboxes, we have developer, developer pro, right? So based on your needs, so you can so developer, then we have like integration, UAT, staging and production. So based on our need and based on the user story, we can deploy one org to another org with the help of this integration that is called DevOps Center in Salesforce. So this is the very most important for us. You can try and this is the very, uh, beta version, but uh, you can try this one because it's application available under the Apex Exchange and you can download it and you can configure these things. So here you can see development stages, you can check it each and every packages like that. So this is all about like DevOps centers. Now we have some extra functionality under here that is called Salesforce connector and we have like Amazon connector or Anthena. So let me click on this one and let's see what happened. So now this is another feature you can learn from here because it's officially side of the Salesforce. It's a winter 23 new things. Now here you can see view the data with record pages related list and list view. And uh, we can use this connector for the Amazon and to integrate AWS data natively. So which uh, with the uh, Salesforce and to run the interactive and uh, hook the queries. So we can use different types of instances and we have services like S3 means simple storage services without managing RDBMS infrastructure of ETL tools. So this is the capability of this feature. So you can integrate and you can, can interact your query with Salesforce, right? So here we have another things that is called new standard component for embedded screen flow in LWC. So previously we can integrate LWC to flow lightning flow, but here you can see the we can integrate flow as well uh, like LWC into the uh, this lightning web component LWC. So we can integrate and we can use screen flow under the LWC. So this is the new feature. Let me show you with practical this one. So let me log in into my org. I just logged in here. You can see. So let me create a new flow so you can easily understand what's going on. So now here, let me create the screen flow because it's working for the screen flow. And here, let me add the screen here. Under this screen, let me add this screen one. Under this screen, we have like display, display text and just drag and drop this one. And you have to do one thing here let's say message and after that you have to give like I am flow under LWC or in LWC 
based on your need you can change it and you can format this text as well so let's say here we have this one let me select this text here right you can maintain the size or something like that let me increase the size as 18 and let me add the red color here and click on done now you can see this one and here this is the screen flow let me save it and now let's say flow to LWC right and just save it once you save it you have to activate this flow and you can use this flow under the LWC so let me open the LWC here so now you can see here under this editor let me create a new LWC component that is called uh, let's say flow with LWC something like that and is exposed true and I want to use in this pages click on this deploy button now you can see our component is created here now it's time to use that so how to use that very simple let me add the card first of all under this card let's say let me remove this one under this card I need to add my flow so how to use that flow so under this documentation part let me show you the documentation part we have this template right so just copy this one and uh, just paste into your code so here just paste it here under here you can see like lightning flow lightning hyphen flow and flow API name and then close this is the new tag you can use it and after that you can see like flow hyphen API hyphen name right so I need to add my flow API name so how to get API name just you can go here in this gear icon just click on that one just copy this name done it and just go back into your editor and paste it here and let me save it so here you can see successfully saved let me open my org first of all so once you open the org and let's say here it's automatic deployed here let me add this one here any kind of uh, like uh, any record page or any app page you can add it so let me open this opportunity record and let me add this page here and after that you will be see the output here so just collapse this one now you can see a flow with LWC right so just you have to drag and drop this one let me drag and drop here mm, like this and just drag it and once you drag it now let me save it and let me activate this page here activate and uh, it's asking like define the org default click on the next save it so now you can see our page is activated now just go back and once you go back now you can see my new uh, screen flow under LWC now you can see like I am flow in LWC you can see and this is the new features I hope you like this feature because it's a new uh, for the developers under winter 23 release org so now you can see this uh, I am flow in LWC so this is the screen flow under the LWC that's why you can see this text so we already done this screen flow that's why you can see here right so let me move the next feature so next feature is like uh, we have like refreshing API so previously we have some problem under the LWC so we cannot refresh directly any component so under this release we have this feature and we can refresh it so this is a new module that is called lightning slash refresh module under this refresh module we have like force colon refresh view so we can refresh our like a synchronized component data without a page refresh by using refresh view API so no need worry about like every time you have to refresh your page manually no so in this feature you can use this module and you can refresh your page uh, internally so no need worry about like externally right so this is another feature under this release for the developer now we have another feature about the shadow dom or shadow mix dom so under this feature we have lots of things like build the component in the mix shadow dom it's still in beta but uh, you can use this here so you have to do one thing so once you add your component just you have to use this property that is called static 
shadow support mode so it can be any like that you can reset we have uh, some property like shadow uh, shadow support mode we have two types of mode any and reset so based on this render the whole component subtrees in native shadow dom where it is possible so you can use this any reset basically used for enable a subclass to output of the receiving the shadow support mode value from the super class so you can reset only if the component super class is using any and no parent component are using any so this is for like any and reset so you can learn from here this is the officially side of the salesforce about this release so this is all about like mix shadow dom right so here now we have another things like uh, still in upgradation side like you can deploy or your site deployments with the new metadata apis right so here we have like lwr sites so it's a lightning right lightning sites and based on runtime so based on this lwr sites so you can deploy your metadata under the salesforce or using vs code so you can easily understand like this so this is the first step second third and fourth based on your need so you can edit the design or js or any kind of things under this features so this is this is for basically like another great beta for the those of your building in experience cloud is the ability to upgrade your metadata apis right so basically digital experience bundle you can do these things or your site workspace and store in this site folder so basically it another site folder you will be see here and based on this site folder you can do your work accordingly so this is the another feature now this is the another feature here that is called apex sdk for this slack now in beta so previously there is a no sdk provided by the salesforce so here you can see this uh, now you can see apex sdk for this slack is now here so this feature manage internal or external user with apex sdk for slacks beta so basically uh, collaborate with the customers and partners to share Salesforce data sure, securely with the Slack Connect integration and the Apex SDK for the Slack Beta. So Apex SDK for Slack Beta offers management for the default user and Slack Connect integrations. Right. So there are so many like Slack Connect uh, default user. So you can connect with the help of this Slack Connector SDK. Right. So this is the managing internal or external user using Apex SDK. So this is another features, right? So let me move the next features here. Now, if you don't know about this beta for the code builder, so I already posted one video about this code builder. So with practically, you can watch my previous video about this code builder in my playlist, or maybe like uh, you can find out this video code builder under the videos section, and you will be get a, get to know about this, and you will be get some idea about this code builder right so now here this is another features about uh, like the salesforce doesn't use any kind of like software so you know like salesforce always work the uh, only internet and browser system because it's a SaaS application or pass application based on your need right so you can choose that so no need worry about any kind of software pre-installation in your machine or local system so everything in, in sky you can just log in and you can work accordingly so everything available under sky means cloud so here you can see this is screen source this is a code builder and you can see the url so i already created one uh, video about this code builder so you can watch my video for more updates right so this is all about like uh, new features under winter 23 release or for the developers this is all about the new features under winter 23 release or for the developers so i hope you learn something new in this video if you like this video please hit the bell icon and subscribe my youtube channel for more updates so till then bye bye take care see ya